The golfing world's attention was on Latrobe, Pennsylvania this week, as the game said farewell to the king. Golf's leading names, including some of America's victorious Ryder Cup stars, came together in Arnold Palmer's hometown to remember their sport's first true superstar. The memorial service included a revealing personal tribute from Arnie's grandson. He would always take my phone call, always. In fact, I called him one day and he would always answer the phone and in his voice, where are you? That was, that was how he answered the phone every time. And this one particular time, he said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. And I said, where are you? He said, I'm with the president. <laughs> I said, the president of what? <laughs> and he said to me as if it was so obvious, the United States. He said, I'm in the Oval Office right now with the president. And I said, well, why are you answering your phone? He said, I wanted to talk to you. Palmer's great friend and rival, Jack Nicholas, was at the memorial service and provided an emotional tribute to the seven-time major champion. You don't lose a friend of almost 60 years and not feel an enormous loss. But my wife often says, the memories are the cushions of life. Each of you sitting here today, or perhaps sitting at home, has at least one wonderful memory of Arnold Palmer to balance out your hurting heart. Remember when Arnold Palmer touched your life, touched your heart. And please, don't forget why. Thank you. It was a day that marked Palmer's remarkable influence on his sport and also the personal qualities which made him so popular to his rivals and fans alike. He was more than a great sportsman. For decades, Arnie was the game's outstanding ambassador. I was at his office in Latrobe uh, after the US Open this year and, and you get on, outside, the, outside the door, the walls are just filled with letters and, of, from presidents and world leaders. And these guys all knew Arnold, and, and you can get a sense that they really cherished the relationship they had with Arnold, much less him with, with them. But the essence of Arnold is that there were the more common people, be it in the galleries or someone he met at a pro-am or anyone else, and he treated them with the same consideration he would have a United States president. That's what made Arnold Arnold. I mean, he, he never walked past anyone without looking him in the eye and making him feel like he'd known him for, for 30 years. He brought a magnetism, a kind of a physicality, a, a kind of, when masculinity was, was all the rage. And he'd smoke that cigarette, you know, and he had that quiff. And you look at him, there's some of the shots at the end of the 50s and the early 60s, particularly when he came across to England in the, in the Open Championship, resurrected that tournament single-handedly at the behest of the RNA, one in 61 and 62. And you would think James Dean was playing golf. I mean, it was that electric. Uh, and you can see the response to him, you know, wherever he went. Um, it was like the Pied Piper. The great thing about Arnold, you, you talk about Arnold Palmer, you know he won four Masters, you know the charge from the behind to win the U.S. Open. The greatest part about Arnold, and he talked about this, was the way he handled the many, many disappointments. He coughed up chances to win U.S. Opens, he lost in playoffs. Jack Nicklaus was a more, a more successful championship golfer. Arnold handled the, the downs and the, and the bad times in golf and the disappointments and it was almost going forward you were like well there's no way you can't conduct yourself with great sportsmanship and that is, that's probably Arnold's greatest legacy. A true sporting legend, he may be gone but Arnold Palmer will never be forgotten by the game he loved and the many people whose lives he touched. <laughs>